How you doing? I'm Darren with Ash Kick and Barbecue. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today we are talking jalapeno cheddar smoked sausage. Now I came up with this recipe last June. It was on my birthday. I was up until three in the morning making sausage. It's exactly how I wanted to spend my birthday and it turned out phenomenal. And I even brought some over to my grandparents. My, they're in their 70s and my 70 some year old grandmother loved it with the jalapenos in there. Now I do de-seed and de-vein them so it's not as hot. If you want it hot, leave them whole, send them through the grinder. They're gonna be amazing. Before we jump in and I show you the process on this, I just wanted to say hello to my friend Erica's son, Henry. He watches the channel. He's a little cook in his own right. So Henry, thanks so much for watching. I just wanted to say hello to you and thank you. And let's jump in and get this jalapeno cheddar sausage ready to go. All right, so the very first thing I like to do is get my dry ingredients incorporated. So I'm doing about a 15 pound batch of sausage today. So I have these all measured out percentage based. I'll have the full recipe down below for what I used and the percentages. So if you're doing a five pound batch, you can just follow the percentage and you'll still be good to go. But first thing I'm coming in with is some milk powder just to help out with our bind. I'm gonna get that in. Coming in with kosher salt, granulated garlic, pink curing salt, tailgaters barbecue party rub, my Ash Kickin' Barbecue Honey Chipotle Rub, some black pepper, and some smoked paprika. So now that I have that all in there, I'm just gonna get it mixed up and evenly incorporated. So there we go, our dry ingredients are all mixed up. Let's talk about the meat we're using. All right, so this is the meat we're using today, and this is some Wagyu brisket right here. This is Snake River Farms Wagyu brisket, and it might be a little hard to tell on camera, but there's a lot of intermuscular marbling in there, and I always leave the fat on here. Now the pork I'm using is Compart Duroc pork. I always leave the fat on that too. When I'm using this mix, I don't worry about adding pork fat to it because I know that there's enough fat in the brisket and there's enough fat in the pork. If you're gonna be using normal commodity pork and briskets, you may wanna consider adding some pork fat into it. It's totally up to you. I think you can still have a good sausage just going half and half, but a lot of people talk about that 70 to 30 ratio. And if I wasn't using Snake River Farms Wagyu brisket and Compart Duroc pork, I'd probably be a little more peculiar, but I've made this recipe numerous times and I know it turns out fantastic. And I mean, there's a lot of fat in the muscles and there's a lot of fat left on here. So it ends up perfect in my opinion. And I don't, I don't worry about it too much. For me, making sausage is enjoyable. I like to pass it out to my family and my friends. So I don't get too technical. Like I said, everyone always enjoys it. So that's what we're working with today. I'm gonna go ahead and get this grinder set up. I've had all the pieces outside in the cold. I'm in Minnesota. It's below 40 degrees today. It's been out for about an hour. So everything is nice and cold. My jalapenos, I have to and de-seeded and de vein them. Stuck them in the freezer. I want those nice and cold too. The only thing I haven't gotten yet is my cold water. I'm gonna get that after we get this ground. So I'm gonna get this set back in the fridge just to keep nice and cold. It's pretty frozen, half frozen, which is what you want when you're grinding it. So I'm gonna get this grinder set up. We'll send it through this meat grinder. One and a half horsepower is an absolute tank. So I'm gonna get this set up and we'll grind some meat. All right, so I have everything set up, ready to go. I have my jalapenos here. They've been in the freezer. They're pretty stiff. Now I'm gonna be grinding these as I'm grinding the meat so everything gets nice and incorporated. We're ready to rock. I'm gonna speed this up. I'll let you know how long it takes to grind about 15 pounds. It's about quarter after 8 p.m. right now. So I'll let you know how long it takes to grind this up. But I did about 150 pounds of venison sausage a couple weeks ago with my brother and some buddies. We did summer sausage and brats and it tore through it very quickly. I'd say probably less than a half hour. It just flew through it. So really nice product. I'll have a link to it down below if you wanna check it out. All the meat stuff is great. So let's get grinding. All right, and there's all of our ground meat ready to go. We're gonna get this seasoned up, get the liquid in there and just hand mix it. I wish I had a mixer, I don't. And doing 150 pounds by hand was extremely cold and just terrible. This 15 pounds, a little more manageable. In case you're wondering, that took four minutes from start to finish and that's with my dog pulling the cord out of the wall because she really wanted to get at this meat. So anyways, four minutes, 15 pounds. Now let's start getting into the little bit more technical aspect of the sausage making process. All right, so here is our ground meat. You can see the jalapenos in there look really great. We have a nice fat ratio in there. Now we're gonna come in with our dry seasoning. And I don't like to make a slurry. I know some people do. I don't really prefer it. I just like to come in 
and just get this all in there like so. And then I'm gonna come in with my liquid, which is just plain cold water. Everything's cold we're working with. Now the only thing left to do is get our hands dirty and I'm gonna mix this for about five, 10 minutes, however long it takes to get that nice protein extraction and get it nice and tacky. So just jump in and get your hands dirty. You know, some people like to double grind this because it says it gets a jump start on this mixing and that's fine if you want to do that. You can run it through twice on the coarse die. I just don't really like doing that and there's not a right way or a wrong way to make this if it works for you. Go ahead and do it. That's the beauty of cooking is one method that works for one may not be the preferred method of someone else and that's A-OK. -okay. Do what you want to do. If you want to get a jump start on your mixing, Go for it if that works good for you, absolutely. This is very cold, I will tell you that. I can see why it'd be preferred, but hey, nothing like a little muscle and tough love making some sausage. All right, so at this point, our sausage is starting to get a little tacky. I'm gonna go ahead and add our high temp cheddar cheese. Now this was in the freezer as well, just cause I want everything really cold. And when I start working this in there, I don't want this crumbling or breaking up or melting from the heat of my hands. And I will say if, when you're mixing this up, those cotton glove liners you use to handle hot stuff also work great for keeping your hands semi warm while you're doing this. I mean, my fingers hurt right now, this is very cold, but that's an important thing when you're making sausages, having very, very cold meat. So I'm gonna add this now. All right, so now we're just gonna mix this up and get everything evenly incorporated. And this ended up being a little bit over the percentage of cheese that I have in this recipe, but nobody's gonna complain about more cheese. At least nobody that's eaten these and that I know. And as I'm mixing this, if this isn't quite as tacky as you think it should be, you can add a little bit more water as you go. Just don't add too terribly much, but this is coming along nicely. You can see right here, it's sticking to my glove. It's not falling off. We're starting to get a really nice bind on here and it's gonna bind wonderfully in the casing. So I'm just gonna mix this up for a couple more minutes. All right, so I've been mixing this up for a few minutes now, and look at that, it's sticking to the glove, not coming off. We're gonna have a really nice bind on this, and it's looking really good. At this point, what I'd recommend, if you have never done a recipe before, or you're experimenting, just fry one of these up on the stove, give it a taste, see how your salt content is. If you need more, add a little more. Make a test patty, try it out. But this, I already know, is gonna be amazing. We have a nice, good emulsification on here. Everything is looking really good, not coming off. So yeah, I think this is right where we want it to be. It's gonna be a nice coarse ground sausage. And another thing, if it's not coming together and it's been a while of you mixing, add a little bit of water to this, do it slowly until you have that right emulsification that you're looking for, but just know that if you're doing this by hand, it's going to take a little time. It's going to take a little muscle. So just keep that in mind. All right, so it is at this point in our sausage journey that I'm going to be showing you the process that I hate the most, and that's stuffing the sausage. Mainly because I'm a one-man show. I don't have anyone to crank this lever over here for me to get these links right. And I haven't bought myself a foot pedal stuffer yet where I can just control it with my foot. They're like 900 bucks. Haven't bought one yet, but it's coming soon because this is for the birds. I mean, cranking this lever. If you have the money and you're gonna be making a lot of sausage, get yourself a foot pedal, automatic stuffer. It's gonna save you a lot of headaches in the long run. But let's get this filled up. When you're filling this up, you wanna pack it in there nice and tight. You don't want any air bubbles in your tube. So get that in there. Just get this thing completely packed down. There we go, we got it full up. So I'm just gonna get this on here and just slowly crank this down until the meat comes to the tip of this tube right here. All right, so this is loaded and ready to go. I'm gonna grab the casings and we'll get started. All right, so these are our hog casings. I've just had them sitting in water, rinsed them off, got all the salt off of them. Had them sitting there just so they're a little easier to work with. I'm gonna find one end. I'm gonna open it up with my two fingers here. I'm just gonna dunk some water in it just to kind of make sure that that last little bit of salt has run through here. Just like that. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this water, pour it on my pan, just so things slide around a little bit easier. Now we'll load up the stuffer. Save your jokes right here. All right, 
Now I'm just gonna tie a knot at the end of this, nice and tight, and I'll worry about snipping this off later. I'm just gonna get that all the way on there. So now when you're stuffing this, you gotta go by feel. You're gonna screw up a few times. You're gonna blow some casings. It still happens to me, and I've made quite a bit of sausage. I've just never filmed it. Like I said, I'm a one-man show, and I hate trying to film and stuff and do all that at once, but we're gonna do it today. So as we start going, what I like to do even now is just apply a little bit of pressure as that starts filling up and it'll pretty much just start letting itself go. So just go slow. If you blow a casing, it's not the end of the world. And make these as big and as small as you want. I just eyeball them, some people measure them. I don't really care that much. I know it's gonna be delicious. And that's about where I want it, so I'm gonna back off. And you can see we have our casing here. I'm just gonna squeeze it to fill it out and then I'm gonna twist it just to get that nice link right there. And that looks really good. A Little uneven from side to side, but it's gonna take a few to get it going right, but it's looking really good. So that's pretty much exactly where I want it. I'm gonna do one more here, I'll show you, and then I'm gonna do this off camera because it's gonna take me a little while. That's why I have the water down there is so these can slide around. And they're not getting hung up and causing a burst casing. Now, this one we went this way, this one we're going this way. That way they don't undo each other and then we get a nice seal here. So tomorrow, after we've let these sit in the fridge, we can snip these apart and let them smoke that way. So there we go, there's your sausage. I always have varying sizes on my links until I get my rhythm down. So this one's a lot bigger. I'll probably use this one as a tester, to be honest, because it's bigger. And I know that when this one's done, these smaller ones are gonna be done. So that's all I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna get the rest of these stuffed up. I'll let you know how many total we have. I got about another 10 pounds to do, and I'm not gonna make you suffer through that. So I'm not a sausage professional. I am a sausage enthusiast. I enjoy making it. It's relaxing to me. So I'm just gonna finish this batch up and I'll bring you back when they're done and show you what we're gonna do next. All right, so it has been about an hour. You can see our jalapeno cheddar sausages are ready to go. I ended up with about 52 of them. I only had two blowouts. One I redid, one I saved, and have it over here. I'm just gonna use that to temp tomorrow when we're cooking them to see when they're done. But yeah, these are looking fantastic. I did put a little piece of paper towel underneath them, and then I took another paper towel and just kind of dried them off just to help with the drying process. But these are gonna go into the refrigerator overnight and let that cure set up, and then tomorrow we're gonna smoke them. I can't wait to show you how these turn out. They are gonna be so juicy, studded with cheese, studded with jalapenos, and absolutely amazing. Hey, if my technique isn't the best, I'm still learning. That's what cooking's all about. But I can promise you that this recipe is fantastic. And if you follow this recipe, and have a better technique, you're gonna love them. So these are going into the refrigerator overnight. We'll pick back up tomorrow when we're getting them out in the smokehouse. And yeah, I can't wait for these to be done. So we will see you tomorrow. All right, so it is the next morning. It's about 8.45 in the morning. And all I'm gonna do is just get these links separated. That way I can get them sitting out under a fan and just finish drying these off. They're already pretty dry, but there's a few moist spots from underneath. I'm just gonna let them sit out under a fan while the smoker comes up to temp, and then we'll get them on. So let's get these snipped up. All right, and there we go. There are all of our sausages snipped up, ready to go out on the smoker, and just hopefully you can maybe see that, but check that out. Absolutely studded with cheddar, jalapeno. These are gonna be so fantastic, I mean, it's already plumped up nicely from sitting overnight in the fridge, allowing that cure to do its work. I mean, this is just gonna be a fantastic sausage. You'll see right here, this is the one where I had my blowout. I left this one so I can probe this one and get an idea of where our temperatures are at out in the smoker. I'm just gonna let these things go. Now, I'm gonna be putting them in the smoker to dry them off at 130 degrees for an hour. Again, these are cured so we can go with those nice low temps and do a nice low cold smoke on them. Yeah, this is gonna be the one we probe just to make sure because it has the blowout. And I mean, it's still gonna be delicious. All right, and before we get these sausages out on the smoker, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my good buddy Ricer over at Dead Broke Barbecue, or as I like to call him, Ricer, the Sausage King of Wisconsin. We talked last night about the method on how I'm going to be cooking these today because I had never done smoked sausages out on this smoker. I've done summer sausage, turned out great. I had a few issues, but I talked to Ricer last night. He gave me a rundown of what he would do for these. So we're going to be cooking these with the Ricer method. So thank you, Ricer, for helping me out. I really appreciate it. I 
appreciate it. You guys be sure to go check him out over at Dead Broke Barbecue. He has some fantastic content and he is the man. So thanks again, Ricer, I appreciate it. Let's get these out on the smoker. All right, today we're gonna to be cooking these sausages on the Pro Smoker Smokehouse Pro Classic. Now, this is an awesome cooker. I used it for some summer sausage. I have it set at 130 degrees. You can see it's at about 132, plus minus a couple degrees, no big deal. Now, for the first hour, we're just gonna dry these sausages out. So I'm gonna get these on, set a timer for an hour. No smoke on them right now. We're just gonna let them dry out. So let's get these loaded up. All right, so you can see we have all the sausages in here. I'm gonna get this closed up, let it get back up to temperature, set a timer for one hour. We'll let these dry out, and then we're gonna get some smoke on these. So we'll see you in one hour. All right, so it has been one hour. We're gonna get some smoke on these sausages now. I'm gonna be using the hickory sawdust here. Let's see if you can see this. The hickory sawdust here from Pro Smoker. And all we're gonna do is get it in this tray right here. So we'll just fill this up about three quarters of the way. We're gonna add some water to this and get it nice and mixed up. And then all we're gonna do is create a little funnel in here. All right, so now we have our smoke ready to go. We're gonna get this onto the cooker. All right, so you can see our sausages are looking nice right here, nice and dry. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and flip all these. All right, so I just rotated the racks as well, just moving the top one to the bottom and every one one up. Flipped them just for even cooking. Now I'm also gonna be getting a probe into these just so we can monitor the temperatures. And I'm actually gonna move this one to right here. And if you remember, this is the one we had the blowout on. And I am just gonna get a probe right here in the center of it, get that in. Next, I'm gonna take my wood here I'm gonna put it right underneath. There's a burner down here. I'm just gonna place it straight on top of that burner. Now I'm gonna bump the temperature up to 170 degrees. We're gonna make the necessary event adjustments per the book, and we're gonna let this go for another hour. Then I'll come out, rotate the racks, flip the sausages, and let it go. So we're one hour in. We'll see you in one hour. I'll let you know how long this takes, but I'm gonna get these vents closed down, and we'll see you in one hour. All right, so it has been another hour. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate these sausages. All right, so I've gone ahead and rotated everything. We're just gonna let this keep going. I'm gonna come out and do this every hour until we're up to temperature. I'll let you know how long it takes to get up to 155. I'm not gonna bring you back every time because it's a little redundant. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep repeating this process until we're up to temperature. And like I said, I'll let you know how long it's been. So we'll see uh, when it's time to get these off. All right, so it has been five and a half hours. My alarm went off. These sausages are done. And as you can see, we have a beautiful mahogany color on there. Just a beautiful looking sausage. Check that out. Excellent color, nice and firm. These are gonna be great. So like I said, five and a half hours, we just let these roll. I rotated them accordingly every hour. I have the Lone Star Grill fired up to 300 degrees because we're gonna cook a few of these off and slice into them. But first we need to get these into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. And that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so I have a tub full of ice water here. I'm just gonna get all of these sausages in there. All right, so we have all of the sausages in the ice bath. I'm gonna let them sit there for about 10, 15 minutes. We'll get them dried off, get the ones that we aren't cooking right now inside so they can be vacuum sealed. We'll get the ones that we are cooking onto the Lone Star Grill's pellet grill. We'll cook them off. We'll see how they turned out. I know they're gonna be fantastic. We'll see in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, it has been 10 minutes. We've let these sit in the ice bath, and now I'm just gonna get these out and dried off, and we'll get the other ones on the Lone Star. So I'll bring you back when I get these all dried off. All right, so here are all the sausages, dried off, cleaned. I highly recommend soaking them and then drying them off, wiping them off with a paper towel or a towel. That way you get any of that soot or smoky residue off of them. And let's go check on the ones on the cooker. All right, these are the ones we got going on the Lone Star Grills pellet grill running at 300 degrees. Just heating these up again. You can see here, they are looking beautiful, nice and plump. So I'm gonna let these get heated up. I'll meet you in the house and we're gonna try these. See you in a bit. 
All right, so this is our sausage that we just took off the Lone Star Girls pellet grill, looking very nice and plump, very smoky. I can't wait to try this. Let's slice a few of these up. Instantly cheesy. Oh, we got a piece of jalapeno falling out there. Get back on there. Check that out. Absolutely beautiful, cheesy, juicy jalapeno falling out there. That looks so amazing. Let's get a couple more slices here. Yeah, this is looking fantastic. Now I'm just gonna go straight for the cross section here. There is not a shortage of cheese in this sausage, I'm telling you. There's jalapeno, there's studded cheese. Look how juicy this is. This is gonna be fantastic. Let's jump out and give this a taste test. All right, this is the moment of truth. We're gonna try this out, let's do it. This is 100% my favorite sausage recipe ever. It's so much better than buying the kit packages that you can get. It's super simple. It's perfect amount of salt, perfect amount of smoke. That pro smoke did a wonderful job. Like I said, it took about five and a half hours, but this is a beautiful piece of sausage right here. Absolutely fantastic. Yep, snaps perfectly. Juice just pouring out of it. That is a wonderful sausage right there. Going in for one more. So rich, so smoky, so cheesy. Nice little bite from the pepper in there and the jalapenos, but not overbearing. Anyone's gonna enjoy this. Like I said, guys, I'm not a professional sausage maker. I just really enjoy the process. It is truly an art, art form. And for the people who are professionals at it, you really gotta give them their credit because it's not easy to master. But I'm telling you right now, if you got the skills, a little bit of money to invest, make this recipe. If you already have everything to make sausage, make this recipe, because you're not gonna be disappointed. The flavor is just there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, stay safe, and we will see you next time.